نعتمد بحول الله اليوم استراتيجية صندوق الاستثمارات العامة 2021 إلى 2025 التي تمثل مرتكزا رئيسيا في تحقيق طموحات وطننا الغالي نحو النمو الاقتصادي ورفع جودة الحياة وتحقيق مفهوم التنمية الشاملة والمستدامة في مختلف القطاعات التقليدية والحديثة صندوق الاستثمارات العامة استحداث مليون وثمانمائة ألف وظيفة جديدة مباشرة وغير مباشرة خلال الخمس سنوات القادمة وذلك انطلاقا من أن الصندوق الاستثمارات العامة لا يعد ذراعا استثماريا المملكة العربية السعودية فحسب بل محركا أصيلا لتنويع الاقتصاد وخلق الوظائف يمضي صندوق الاستثمارات العامة بخطوات ثابتة ليكون أحد أكبر صناديق الثروة السيادية حول العالم بحلول عشرين ثلاثين كما ستتجاوز أصول صندوق الاستثمارات العامة بعون الله 7 تريليون و500 مليار ريال سعودي في 2030 تساهم في تنميه الاقتصاد الوطني وتحقيق الاستدامه الماليه والتنمويه الشامله مرسخه بذلك مكانه ضمن دوائر المال والاعمال العالميه لكي يكون الشريك المفضل عالميا. Knowledge Economic City. Located in the city of Medina in western Saudi Arabia, the Knowledge Economic City was just a rough plan back in 2006. 14 years and $7 billion later, the mega project is on its way to becoming a booming economic center. Number 8. King Abdulaziz Airport. Our next stop is the King Abdulaziz Airport in the port city of Jeddah. This airport is the third largest airport in all of Saudi Arabia, and it's one of the busiest, too. After a recent expansion to the airport, each terminal can now hold 3 million people. That means that almost the entire population of Jeddah could fit comfortably inside the airport. Number 7. King Abdullah Financial District after years of delays, the Saudi Arabian government finally resumed the mega project they started in 2006. The King Abdullah Financial District was created to honor the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz. The architectural masterpiece, located in the capital of Riyadh, was estimated to cost $7.8 billion. It includes 60 residential towers that can hold up to 50,000 people, as well as a series of hotels and offices. Number 6. Jeddah Economic City Also known as the Kingdom City, the Jeddah Economic City, these two collaborators of the $20 billion mega project plan to construct the tallest building in the world at the center of the city, called the Jeddah Tower. With the same height as two and a half Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other, the building will have a shopping mall that is even larger than the Mall of America. But the Jeddah Tower will not be the only attraction in the city that is almost two times as large as Central Park. While the project has not been finalized yet, the layout includes a five-star Four Seasons Hotel and tons of apartments. Number 5. Riyadh Metro In the capital of Saudi Arabia, the Riyadh Metro was built for the growing population of residents in the city. Riyadh has a little over 5 million people today and is expected to have over 8 million people by 2030, so they need a way to travel quickly and efficiently. That's why the Saudi Arabian government gave a selection of international companies $22.5 billion from oil revenues to complete this mega project. Number 4. The Jubail City Project 
The creation of the Jubail City Project has been a long process, with the mega project starting back in 1976. Jubail, just off the coast of the Arabian Gulf, is responsible for creating 7% of Saudi Arabia's gross domestic product. There are even bigger plans for this city in the future, because the government hopes on making Jubail the largest industrial city in the world. They will be spending $80 billion just on infrastructure, since they want to build over 50,000 residential buildings in the area by 2026. There are already 530 miles, or 850 kilometers, of roads and 60 bridges in the city, but the new and improved version will additionally include a six-lane highway for even faster travel. Number three, Al-Haram Grand Mosque Expansion. Also referred to as the Grand Mosque of Mecca, this next mega project cost almost $100 billion to create. The project is started back up again with a goal of accommodating an estimated 15 million pilgrims that are expected to travel through the holy Islamist city of Mecca. Once the project is finished, it will be able to comfortably hold 2.2 million people. With the world's largest clock tower looking over the Al-Haram Grand Mosque, the Saudi Arabian government hopes that the expansion of the mosque will also increase religious tourism from all over the world. Number two. King Abdullah Economic City. In between the Red Sea and the desert lies one of Saudi Arabia's largest projects, the King Abdullah Economic City. At 70 square miles in size, the metropolis is just a little larger than Washington, D.C., and cost $100 billion to create. The government believes that the bustling city will be successful enough to earn back the money spent in no time at all. However, with dropping oil prices and thousands of necessary permits, the project has been redesigned over four times. As of now, tentative plans for the area include the development of an industrial valley, apartment complexes, and a financial island to increase revenue. Plus, there will be a sea resort with a yacht club and an 18-hole golf course. The Number one, Neon. Our last mega project is by far the most impressive of them all. Costing 500 billion to develop, this cross-border city lies right next to the Red Sea and Jordan. With a square mileage over 20 times that of Los Angeles, Neon is a gigantic endeavor. The innovative project is going to be one of the most technologically advanced cities the world has ever seen. Since it will be located in the desert, contractors are working on creating artificial clouds in the sky through a process called cloud seeding to increase rainfall. If that does not sound futuristic enough, all schools in the area will have holographic teachers. Traveling around Neom will be a breeze too, since residents can avoid traffic with flying taxis. The Saudi Arabian government is determined to have this city become a reality by the year 2025. By 2022, luxury tourism will be a $1.1 trillion market. By 2027, 2.4 billion tourists will spend $2.2 trillion on luxury travel experiences. These luxury tourists don't want to be elbow to elbow with other visitors. They will be looking instead for something different, something adventurous, something unique. They will be looking for tourism that unites. The Red Sea Project will unite the beauty of Saudi Arabia for so long an unknown and mysterious place and the rest of the world. There is an obvious gain for the kingdom, measured in economic growth and employment opportunity. In Saudi Arabia, tourism is a strategic priority. By 2030, it expects 1 million people to be employed in tourism, serving 100 million domestic and international visitors. This project will be a major step towards that aim, creating 35,000 direct jobs and 35,000 direct and induced jobs, and with the first of many thousands of visitors to arrive in 2022. But the traveler gains too they gain an understanding of new places and perspectives that were once close to them. The Red Sea Project is at the heart of Saudi Arabia's effort to open up its tourism industry. And we, like the country, are looking firmly to the future. But Vision 2030 is not just about the future of Saudi Arabia. It's also about the betterment of the planet. We believe that Saudi global leadership can bring people together, make a stand for tolerance, encourage interfaith dialogue, embrace cooperation between Christian, Jewish, and Muslim communities, and encourage the Muslim community's responsibility to deter animosity and violence. To achieve these goals, Saudi Arabia must lead. 
And that's where the Vision 2030, that's who we are. Women. Whilst Saudi Arabia has made some progress in women's rights, especially under Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, deep structural flaws remain when it comes to gender. The participation rate of women in the economy was only 26% in 2019 according to the World Bank. With female unemployment, that is to say those women actively seeking work, running five times higher than men. So with that background, why is too much of a good thing a curse? This really boils down to how wealth is managed and the impact it's allowed to have on your wider economy. If you imagine a spectrum of economic management, which means it's also an investment in women, children, education, social protection, and rural infrastructure. And remember the graph we showed you. The simulation was based on an increase of dietary energy supplies, or what we would call calories. I studied in the United States. I studied in the USA. Well, I was, I was a student in America. Thanks to the King's special program, most Saudis have studied abroad. And I've even met people who have PhDs from US and British universities. A little bit dangerous, but no accident, so I'm good. I'm a good driver. Uh, yeah, I need to sell these standards. What we're talking about in the quality of life is sports, culture, and entertainment, and the value chain, not only in job creation, but infrastructure building and social development, that those three entities bring to our community. I know I am the woman on the stage, but what I represent is the change of this community that is the integration of the man and the woman, the husband, the father, and the daughter. The social impact that we're actually changing is that the family is now engaging collectively. Then we talk about going to the Crown Prince and saying, you cannot have half of your community not having access to this nation. Women drive. That is monumental change by a leader listening to the community. But what does that also mean? It means now there's no more excuse on lack of productivity. A woman today can't say, I couldn't find a car, I couldn't find a driver, because now you can't. When I was hired, I was the only woman in an office of 1,800 people. A year and a half out, right now my team is made up of men and women, but 27 women work within the two groups that I'm responsible for. Two weeks ago, women entered the stadiums for the first time. 8,000 women on our first day walked into a sports stadium and attended a match. What that meant though, the implication, and why did it take us a while from date of announcement to date of application? We couldn't find enough security women to come and man the spaces. We couldn't find enough ushers. We couldn't find enough volunteers. Now that couldn't, could be a negative, or it could be a positive because that's job opportunities. Uh, when we talk about gender equality, what we're actually, I'd, I'd like everyone to understand, we're not doing gender equality or neutrality or any other secondary word you'd like to put to that statement because the West wants it, because it will target Human Rights Watch and get them off our backs, or Amnesty International is going to say, great, good job you. We're doing it because A, it's the right thing to do. B, it is necessary for our nation from an economic point of view, but also from the holistic nature of how do you want a family to actually function as a family if you're constantly segregating them. It doesn't work that way. I hope you don't think I am the only woman in Saudi that feels this way or is working towards this. I actually represent the thousands of women who are actually alone more competent and qualified than I am. All I can hope to do is that I do them justice while I'm here. These are women who are already in the Shura Council, women who are already in the municipalities, women who have PhDs. You ask us to change, but then when we begin to exhibit change, you come to us with cynicism. And I don't know how to explain how destructive that is when you wake up every morning and you go into the office and you're motivating people to make a change for their community. And we are so thrilled and we're so excited and the article ends up, this was fabulous, but. Why but? We are not working for anyone outside of this nation. We're working for this nation, for the women of our nation, for the men of our nation, for the evolution of where we need to be, and that's how we will benefit you. We believe our region is stronger when it's more secure and prosperous. And we're willing to work with anyone who shares those values. The Arab world is at the crossroads of the world. Historically, it's been an incubator of ideas and thought, advancements in medicine, great literature, law and philosophy. We believe it can be that again, through stability and prosperity, a hub of advancement and transformation and change, a model for building a more inclusive and diverse society. This is the new Saudi Arabia. This is the real Saudi Arabia. Thank you for your time.
بالمجد والعلياء مجدي لخالق السماء وارفع الخفاق أخضر يحمل النور المسطر ردي الله أكبر يا موطني وارفع الخفاق أخضر يحمل النور المسطر ردي الله أكبر يا 